I'm going to give you the ultimate guide to getting compensation in rear-end accident cases. I've used these strategies to get millions of dollars in rear-end car accident collisions. You can use these strategies to maximize your payout in a rear-end accident case. I'm Florida personal injury attorney Justin Ziegler. The amount of compensation that you can get for a rear-end accident collision depends primarily on two factors. One is fault and the other is the extent of your injury. For example, let's take Zach's case. Zach was a client of mine who was in an accident when he was in the back seat of a vehicle that rear-ended the car in front of him. This isn't a typical rear-end crash case because Zach was actually a passenger in the car that rear-ended the other car. However, nevertheless, the same principles apply. We settled Zach's case for $170,000. The reason why the settlement was so large because of the severity of his injury, which again is one of the two large factors in a rear-end accident case. He had a broken arm and he had a rod put into his arm. Specifically, he broke his humerus, which is the arm bone closest to your shoulder. Florida, unfortunately, does not require most drivers to have any bodily injury liability coverage. So someone like Zach can be very badly injured, but if the driver that was at fault for the crash has no insurance, Zach may get nothing. After all, if you sue someone who has no money to pay, you're likely gonna get nothing. The time that it takes to settle a rear end crash case primarily depends on the extent of your injury and the amount of insurance available. If your injury is very large and there's limited insurance, the case will likely settle very quickly. On the other hand, if your injuries are very serious and the insurance limits are very, very large, the case will not settle quickly because it's gonna take time to treat. If you have hardware inserted into your body, doctors often wanna wait a year or so to see if the hardware is doing fine in your body. I represented a gentleman who was driving an 18-wheeler when another 18-wheeler crashed into the back of his truck. The state trooper came to the scene and cited the driver who crashed into my client with a ticket for careless driving. My client told the police officer he had no pain in his shoulder or pain at all after the incident. My client was working at the time of the crash. A few days after the crash, my client visited his physician who noted complaints of shoulder pain. And from that point on, my client treated with medical professionals for shoulder pain and neck pain. My client did not take an ambulance to the hospital. To keep it simple, we'll call my client Mike, although that's not his real name. So Mike ultimately ended up having a shoulder tear. Specifically, he tore his labrum. A doctor who my client's workers' compensation insurer referred him to performed surgery on the shoulder tear. After that, Mike reached out to me and we spoke and he hired me to represent him in his accident case. I contacted the driver's insurance company of the truck that hit Mike. Fortunately, 18-wheelers often have very large insurance policy limits. They're typically $750,000 or higher. In this case, Mike's workers' compensation insurer paid his medical bills and his lost wages, $88,000. Now, the other truck that hit Mike had traveler's insurance, and Broadspire was the company that adjusted and evaluated the claim on behalf of travelers. Broad Spire's initial offer was only $20,000 or so. And that's one thing that frequently happens. Frequently, the first offer is also a lowball offer and it's ridiculous. Ultimately, I was able to settle Mike's case for $210,000. I also made a claim against Mike's uninsured motorist insurer and argued that since the truck that hit him had what's called a self-insured retention, in other words, it was self-insured for the first certain amount, that they were uninsured for purposes of Florida's uninsured motorist law. So we were able to get another 10,000 from Progressive. So it was $200,000 paid by Traveler's Insurance for the truck that hit Mike and $10,000 from Mike's uninsured motorist insurance on his own personal auto policy. Earlier on, I mentioned Zach's car accident. He was a gentleman who broke his arm bone and had surgery. In Zach's case, Zach's mother reached out to me because the rental car insurance companies bodily injury liability insurer had not made her an offer for Zach's injury. In that case, the opening offer in this rear end crash was $125,000. Like most rear end accident cases where you're badly injured, most of Zach's settlement was for pain and suffering. In fact, he received about 99.9% .9 of the settlement was for pain and suffering. Fortunately, he had Medicaid, which paid or had the medical providers write off most of his medical bills. So his medical bills that we had to pay back at the end of the settlement were only 0.1% of the total settlement. 
After my attorney's fees and costs and paying back Zach's out-of-pocket medical bills, Zach received $113,260 in his pocket. In other words, Zach got 66 and two-thirds of the entire settlement in his pocket. In another case, Keith was a passenger in a car in Miami, Florida that was rear-ended. This was a heavy impact crash. After the accident, Keith had some lower back pain. Keith's father happened to be a physician and he wrote him an anti-inflammatory prescription. I spoke with Keith shortly after the crash and since he really didn't receive much medical care, I told him at that point I was unable to represent him. About eight months after the crash, Keith ended up having a hemilaminectomy, a facetectomy, and a microdisectomy. Keith was given general anesthesia for the surgery, and he missed some work after the surgery. Now, after the surgery, he reached out to me again and asked me if anything could be done. So I decided to represent him, and State Farm was the at-fault driver's insurance company. State Farm insured the driver that hit Keith, I asked State Farm for the $100,000 bodily injury liability insurance limits. Fortunately, in this case, the other driver had car insurance. Now, State Farm did not just hand over the $100,000. State Farm argued that Keith did not get consistent treatment after the car crash, so how did State Farm know that the surgery he had around eight months or so later was related to the crash? I then reminded State Farm that Keith's father, who is a physician, prescribed him anti-inflammatory drug and I even showed them Keith's prior medical records, which showed that Keith's father was his primary care physician. State Farm then changed its course and paid the $100,000 bodily injury liability insurance limits. That covers pain and suffering, out-of-pocket medical bills, and lost wages. Similar to other rear-end accident cases with a big injury, most of the settlement was for pain and suffering. Here, State Farm paid about 99% of the total settlement for pain and suffering. In other words, they paid $98,735 for pain and suffering and about $1,265 for out-of-pocket medical bills. After my attorney's fees, costs, and paying back Keith's out-of-pocket medical bills and health insurance lien, Keith received $65,387 in his pocket. My attorney's fees were about 33.4% of the entire settlement. So fortunately, Keith had health insurance and his health insurance company paid $4,744 for his medical bills relating to the injury. Now, Keith's health insurance company requested repayment from the total settlement. I got them to accept $1,265 out of the $4,744 that they wanted. I argued that because Keith did not have an ERISA self-funded health insurance plan, they had to reduce by my attorney's fees and costs and other equitable factors. One of the other fair factors I argued that they had to reduce by was the fact that there was limited insurance available. And Keith's case is just one of the countless examples of past cases I've had where there is limited bodily injury liability insurance or uninsured motorist insurance coverage in a rear end accident collision. The $100,000 settlement was about 79 times the final out of pocket medical bills and health insurance lien that I had to pay back for Keith. Here's a picture of Keith and I when he came to pick up a settlement check, he was ecstatic. If you're getting value out of this video, hit the like button. In another case, my client was driving a car when another car crashed into the rear of her car. My client had a procedure called a percutaneous disectomy. Liberty Mutual insured the other driver who received a ticket for careless driving. We settled that case for the $100,000 policy limits of Liberty Mutual. And once again, there was limited insurance. There was no insurance above the $100,000 of bodily injury liability insurance with Liberty Mutual, and my client did not have uninsured motorist insurance. Unfortunately, many drivers in Florida do not have uninsured motorist insurance, which often limits the total payout in a rear-end accident case. In another case, Mike, that is not his real name, was a passenger in a lift vehicle. The lift vehicle was rear-ended by another vehicle that claimed that they didn't have enough time to stop because the roads were wet and they crashed. Now, the police officer noted in the crash report that my client had very minor neck pain. That was the only injury that was complained of to the police officer, or at least what the police officer noted. Mike did not take an ambulance to the hospital. Insurance companies often pay less money for pain and suffering if you do not take an ambulance to the hospital after a rear end crash. Mike went to the hospital the same day of the crash. He had a CT scan of his brain and his neck. 
Both the CT scan of his neck and brain showed that nothing was wrong, which was good for Mike's health, but that's not good for the rear end crash case. So then Mike searched out for a lawyer to represent him in this rear end crash. I spoke with Mike and he hired me and he did not have health insurance like many other people injured in crashes. I was able to refer him to a medical group who had MRIs taken of his knee, of his ankle, of his neck and his lower back. Mike had an MRI of his wrist and it showed that he had mild fraying or a partial tear of his triangular fibrocartilage that's located in the wrist. Mike also had an MRI of his ankle which showed that he had some fraying of part of his ankle, the Taller Dome. Now Mike did not have any surgery from this crash and all things equal surgery significantly increases the full value of a rear end crash case. Geico insured the driver that hit the lift car and that other driver had $25,000 of bodily injury liability coverage. Geico paid me the $25,000 bodily injury liability coverage within one month of the crash. That is a very quick time period to get a check-in. Most of the time, the driver who rear-ended you, their car insurance company does not pay you a check for $25,000 within one month of a crash. The reason why Geico paid so quickly is because Mike had significant injuries, he did go to the hospital, although he did not take an ambulance, he did go to the hospital the same day of the crash, and he also had no health insurance and medical bills. Now, Lyft's PIP coverage paid for a lot of Mike's medical bills, but the bottom line is when the injuries are large and the insurance policy is low in relation to the injuries, the other side's insurance company typically pays quickly. I didn't stop there. Fortunately, this crash happened at a time when Lyft carried a very large uninsured motorist insurance policy. Unfortunately, now Lyft does not have any uninsured motorist insurance coverage in Florida car accident cases, which is terrible. I was able to get Lyft to pay $45,000 to settle the case. Now their opening offer was a lot less than that. I think it was somewhere around $17,000 or so. So once again, insurance companies often give you a first very low offer. The total settlement in Mike's case was $70,000. It even makes more sense to hire an attorney in a rear end car accident case if you don't have health insurance because how else are you going to get to a doctor? An attorney can refer you to a doctor and the doctor will wait on getting paid until the end of the claim and then they'll get paid from the entire settlement. Now, most often times I encourage my clients if they have health insurance to use their health insurance coverage because they're gonna get a good contracted rate, they're gonna owe less money for medical bills, the medical bills likely will not be inflated, and it's one less argument you have with the other side's insurance company when they argue that the medical bills were totally outrageous and they're not paying the full value of the medical bills. Let's look at another rear end crash case that happened in Central Florida, not too far from Orlando. My client, Antonella, that is not a real name, was rear-ended when a van hit the back of her car. You can see that this was a very severe crash. You can see the damage to the back of her car. After the crash, she had shoulder pain. She searched for a lawyer who could represent her in this crash. She ultimately spoke with me and hired me, and we got to work immediately. Now, Antonella ended up having shoulder surgery. Specifically, she ended up having a rotator cuff tear and she had rotator cuff surgery. The most that the at-fault driver's insurance company would offer was $20,000, which is not reasonable in a rear-end crash case in the state of Florida in a liberal county when the other driver's 100% at fault if someone like my client has rotator cuff surgery. So I filed a lawsuit for Antonella and we sued, the other side took my client's deposition, which is her testimony under oath. I took the deposition of the driver who caused the crash. We had one hearing in front of the judge, and then we settled the case for $65,000 after all those events occurred. What can be learned from Antonella's case is there are certain cases where you get a terrible insurance company, such as the one who was involved in this case who paid the $65,000 settlement. They've since gone out of business and perhaps they've gone out of business for lowballing people and ultimately getting hit with large verdicts. Antonella's case is a perfect example of how some car insurance companies pay so much less than others. If in this same case, the other insurance company would have been Nationwide, Hartford, Hanover, USAA, they would have likely offered significantly more than $20,000 before a lawsuit. Unfortunately for Antonella, we happened to draw 
a poor insurance company, and sometimes it happens where you are dealing with a cheap insurance company. Progressive is another insurance company who, despite their funny ads, they are very, very cheap. In another case, my client, who we'll call Terry, that's not his real name, was in Medley, which is in North Miami-Dade County, Florida. He was here as an on-duty police officer for an assignment. Terry was driving a vehicle and got rear-ended by another vehicle. Now, Terry received treatment through workers' compensation since he was working at the time of the crash. And a couple years or so after the crash, Terry got a letter from one of the insurance companies and he thought someone was making a claim against him. So in other words, he had no intention of making a personal injury claim. I told him because he got rear-ended and he had received treatment and he actually had epidural injections to his lower back that he had a valid claim. State Farm insured the outfall driver. I got them to pay their $10,000 bodily injury liability limits. And Terry had uninsured motorist insurance with Travelers Insurance Company, and they paid $47,000. So the total settlement was $57,000. Again, Terry did not have surgery. He had epidural injections to his lower back. Travelers tends to be a better paying auto insurance company. However, that doesn't mean they're going to offer fair value. I've had a case with Travelers where my client had wrist surgery. It was not an auto accident case, and they forced me to file a lawsuit prior to making a reasonable offer. In another case, Tom was driving a box truck on a freeway in Florida and another vehicle crashed into the back of his truck. The other vehicle was vehicle one in the diagram here. Tom was driving the box truck, which is vehicle two in the diagram. As you can see from the photo, this was a heavy impact crash. It split the back of the box truck. However, Tom did not take an ambulance to the hospital. In fact, he did not go to the hospital at all. His first treatment was six days after the rear end crash. Tom complained of pain in his neck, back, his elbows, and his doctor, his primary care physician, which was the first doctor that treated him after the crash, around six days after, noted that Tom had muscle spasms. As you can see here, Tom had an L3, L4 bulge and an L4, L5 disc bulge. I also claim that this crash worsened or aggravated the pre-existing chrondomyalgia that Tom had in his knee. Even though Tom was driving a work vehicle, the PIP, which is Personal Injury Protection Insurance, which is mandatory in Florida, paid for the majority of Tom's medical bills. Tom was prescribed muscle relaxers and ibuprofen, which is Advil. We settled this case with the at-fault truck driver's insurance company for $28,000. In another case, so Dallas was a passenger in a car in Hialeah, Florida, when another car crashed into the back of the car that Odalis was in. You can see the damage to Odalis's car. This was a significant crash. The other driver was insured by AAA Auto Club Insurance Company. An ambulance did take Odalis to the hospital, and there she had x-rays and CT scans. The CT scan of Odalis's brain and neck showed that nothing was wrong, which was good for her health. Odalis was not entitled to any personal injury protection coverage because she did not own a car. The car that she was in was uninsured, and she did not live with any relatives that owned the car. Odalis had a $16,500 hospital bill. Odalis also did not have health insurance. AAA insurance, like I said, insured the other driver's vehicle. There were three occupants of the vehicle that Odalis was in. I represented Odalis and the driver of the car that she was in. And AAA insurance company, the other driver's insurance company, made the decision to pay the $50,000 limits within a month of the crash. I put significant pressure on AAA to pay the limits as quickly as possible. You can see the settlement check for $25,000 from Auto Club South Insurance Company, which is AAA. Why did AAA pay the $25,000 insurance limit so quickly to us? Four reasons. One, this was a very heavy impact crash. All things equal, car insurance companies pay a lot more in rear end crashes if there's heavy damage to the vehicles involved. Two, Odalis went to the hospital. Three, AAA is a decent insurance company, or at least they were at the time of the crash. And four, there were three people, three occupants in Odalis's vehicle. So AAA knew that there was the potential of three different people making claims for the $50,000 bodily injury liability coverage. I was also able to get $25,000 limits for the driver of the car that Odalis was in 
and those were the maximum limits we could get. Neither would Dallas or the driver of the car that she was in had uninsured motorist insurance. Now, rear-end accidents are just one type of car crash cases. There's tons of other cases that you can get injured in, and there's many, many sh other strategies to maximize the value of a personal injury case. If you're interested in learning how to maximize the value of your personal injury case, watch this video here.